Om Namah Shivaya 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 The sages said, O Sutta, Sutta, the fortunate disciple of Vyasa, obeisances to thee. Thou hast clearly explained the procedure of the worship of the earthen phallic images. Now, kindly explain the number of phallic images as based on the wishes one may have. Thou art favorably disposed to the distressed and the miserable. Sutta said, O sages, you listen to the rules of procedure in the worship of the earthen phallic image, by following which a man reaps full satisfaction. If anyone worships another deity without making the earthen phallic image, his worship shall be fruitless. His restraint and charitable gifts go in vain. The number of earthen phallic images in regard to different desires is being stipulated, which will, O foremost among sages, certainly yield the benefit. The first, invocation, installation, and worship are all separate. Only the shape of the phallic image is the same. Everything else is different. A person who seeks learning shall with pleasure make a thousand earthen phallic images and offer worship. Certainly he will get that benefit. A person desirous of wealth shall make five hundred earthen phallic images. Wishing for a son, one thousand five hundred. Wishing for garments, five hundred. A person desirous of salvation, a crore. Desirous of lands, one thousand. Craving for mercy, three thousand. Desirous of a holy center, two thousand. A person desirous of friends, three thousand. Desirous of the power of controlling, 800. Desirous of bringing about the death of a person, 700. Desirous of enchanting, 800. A person desirous of sweeping off his foes, 1,000. Desirous of numifying, 1,000. Desirous of kindling hatred, 500. A person desirous of freeing himself from fetters, 1,500. If there is fear from a great king, 500. If there is danger from thieves, robbers, etc., 200. If there is the evil influence of Dakini and other foul spirits, 500. In poverty, 5,000. If 10,000 such are made, all wishes will be fulfilled. O great sages, I shall now mention the daily procedure. Please listen. One such is said to remove sins. Two confer wealth. Three are mentioned as the cause for the fulfillment of all desires. Above this, more and more benefits accrue until the stipulated number is reached. I shall now mention another opinion coming from a different sage. An intelligent person can certainly remain fearless after making 10,000 such images. It removes the fear from great kings. A sensible man shall cause 10,000 such to be made for freedom from imprisonment. When there is the fear of the evil influence of Dakini and other evil spirits, he shall cause 7,000 such to be made. A person having no sons shall cause 55,000 such to be made. One shall get daughters by causing 10,000 to be made. A devotee shall achieve the prosperity and splendor of Vishnu and others by making 10,000 images. He shall derive unrivaled glory and wealth by making 1 million images. Certainly, if a man makes a crore, he shall become Shiva himself. The worship of earthen phallic images accords the benefit of a crore of sacrifices. He who spends his time in vain, without worship of such images, will incur great loss. He is no better than a wicked, evil-souled man. 
If the worship of such images is weighed against all the charitable gifts, sacred rites, holy centers, restraints, and sacrifices, both will be found equal. In the age of Kali, the worship of the phallic image is excellent, as is evident from what we see in the world. There is nothing else. This is the conclusion of all sacred texts and religious cults. The phallic image yields worldly pleasures and salvation. It wards off different sorts of mishaps. By worshipping it, man attains sayuja mukti, identity with Shiva. Since the phallic image is enjoined to be worshipped even by sages, it shall be worshipped by everyone in the manner stipulated. Based on size, the images are of three types, Uttama, excellent, Madhyama, normal, and Nitya, inferior. O foremost of sages, I shall explain them. Please listen. A phallic image, four angulas, inches in height, with a splendid pedestal, is mentioned as the most excellent by sages who are well versed in sacred lore. Half of that is middling. Half of this latter is inferior. Thus I have mentioned three types of phallic images. He who worships many such images every day with great devotion and faith can achieve the fulfillment of any desire conceived in his heart. In the four Vedas, nothing else is mentioned so holy as the worship of the phallic image. This is the conclusion arrived at in all sacred lores. All other rites can entirely be abandoned. A really learned man shall worship only the phallic image with great devotion. If the phallic image is worshipped, it means that the entire universe, consisting of the mobile and the immobile, has been worshipped. There is no other means to save persons submerged in the ocean of worldly existence. Men of the world are blind due to ignorance. Their minds are sullied by worldly desires. Except for the worship of the phallic image, there is no other raft to save them from destruction. Hari, Brahma, and other devas, sages, yakshas, rakshasas, gandharvas, charanas, siddhas, daityas, dhanavas, shesha, and other serpents, garuda, and other birds, all the Manus, Prajapati, Kinaras, men, etc., have worshipped the wealth-yielding phallic image with great devotion and have achieved their desires surging in their heart of hearts. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras, persons born of intercaste marriages, and others shall worship the phallic icon with great devotion with the respective mantras. O Brahmana sages, why shall I tell much? Even women and others are authorized in the worship of the phallic image. The twice-born can very well worship according to the Vedic rites, but not so the others who are not authorized. Lord Shiva himself has enjoined that the twice-born shall perform the worship according to Vedic rites and not by any other means. But those dvijas who have been cursed by Dadichi, Gautama, and others do not follow the Vedic rites faithfully. That man who rejects the Vedic rites and follows those laid down in smritis or any other rite will not derive the conceived fruit. The true devotee, after performing worship in the prescribed manner, shall worship the eight cosmic bodies of Shiva consisting of the three worlds, the earth, the waters, the fire, the wind, space, the sun, the moon, and the sacrificer. These are the eight cosmic bodies. Sharva, Bhava, Rudra, Ugra, Bhima, Ishvara, Mahadev, and Pashupati, respectively, are the manifestations of Shiva who shall be worshipped with these cosmic bodies. Then he shall worship the retinue of Shiva with great devotion, with sandalwood paste, raw rice, and holy leaves in the quarters beginning with northeast. They are Ishana, Nandi, Chanda, Mahakala, Bringin, Brisha, Skanda, Kapardisha, Soma, and Shukra. Virabhadra in front, 
and Kirti Mukha at the back. Then he shall worship eleven Rudras. Then he shall repeat the five-syllabled mantra, Shatarudriya, many Shaiva hymns, read Panchanga, and perform circumambulation. After obeisance, he shall bid farewell to the phallic image. Thus I have mentioned the worship of Shiva with due devotion. Divine rites shall always be performed facing the north in the night. Similarly, Shiva's worship shall always be performed facing the north, not the east. Shakti Sanghita shall not be recited facing the north or west since it is the back. Shiva shall not be worshipped without Tripundra, Rudraksha, and Bilvapatra. O best of sages, during the worship, if Bhasma is not available, Tripundra shall be drawn with white clay. <laughs>